Okay, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is your host, Santos. Now, guys, today what I'm going to do is do the part 17 of this series of script programming tutorial. Guys, again, uh, in the previous tutorial, part 16, I already explained my uh, EF Healthy Program. Okay, let me get it again. Okay. So I already explained this EF healthy program. Okay, now I have here EF one run hours program, then another EF two run hours program. Now maybe you will ask, why don't you combine EF one and EF two uh, run hours program into one discrete program? As I said again, uh, I'm not a very expert, or as I said, I don't have a what do you call this one. Mm formal training with this Schneider product. So I just learned it by myself. Now I'm sharing it to you. Okay. So uh, I have written separate run hours uh, program for EF1 and EF2. Okay. So let me walk you through with the program. But first, let me explain the purpose of this EF1 run hours program is to uh generate this ef1 run hours the accumulated one and ef1 sequence hours this is for the sequencing so the job of those two programs is to accumulate the run hours for the runtime and sequencing same here then also uh changing the value of some of the variables like ef1 run request then change over okay then I have also there some set point for runtime 500 EF runtime sequence. I think my default is 168, but because of simulating this control, I need to adjust it to lower value because of course, I don't want you to wait very long time before you will see the output of the program. Okay, that's why I made this one a little bit uh, shorter, okay? But again, this is not hours. This is, I think, mini a uh, second. Okay. So, okay. So let me edit my program. Okay. I will edit that one, or I will launch my script editor. Okay. So once again, uh, I have created also some uh, spinner here or the adjustment. Okay. So that the adjusting of the set point will be uh, will be easy. Okay, if you want to uh, adjust little by little, okay, but you want to adjust, then you can just click this, then enter a value here, okay. Now let me go to the script, okay, let me share this one, let me share script, where are you, okay, yeah. okay, now this is my script program okay so i will walk you through i don't think i need to explain to you again the uh, property window properties window okay this is the, i have similar here i already explained the input the output the basic okay tabs now let me just walk you through with the program okay now here this one i will try to close this close okay now I have here my numeric scan value. Okay, now uh, if it's only numeric, this is just meaning uh, this will not be part of the input tab. Okay, here it will not be part of the input tab. That is just an ordinary variable within the program. Okay, now I have here my deep uh, numeric input. So I uh, need all these identifiers or variables. EFRT set point. This is for the set point. Okay, for the runtime, then sequence set point, EF1 run request, EF1 change over. Okay, the same thing with EF2. Okay, another numeric input, runtime accumulated, EFRT sequence, EFT RT alarm, EF1 RT alarm. Okay, then I have here EF1. As you can see here, these are all related. Most of the points are related for EF1. Okay, as I said, I, I made separate runtime accumulation program for its span. Now, the purpose of it so that it will be very easy for me to debug the uh, script when there is a 
some logic or bugs. If there is some logic error, okay? So it will be very easy for me, okay? Now, uh, okay, I don't need numeric output here, okay? Now, go to line begin, okay? After line six, the next instruction is go to line begin. So this is a jump <coughs> instruction. So it will go to or it will look for line begin. So this is the line begin. Then it will start uh, interpreting or executing the line. Okay, this is sequential. The only the, the only uh, it will not do the sequential if there is a jump instruction. Okay, so scan val. This is my variable. Then I'm using the built-in scan variable here. Okay. Then I am dividing it one. Now, if I want to make it hours, I will divide it by 3,600, okay? So that it will display one hour, okay? So this one is displaying second. If I will make it divide by 60, then it will display minutes. If I will divide it by 3,600, it will display one hour, okay? Okay, then the next instruction here. So this is how you put a comment. In script programming. So you need to uh, type first the apostrophe, then the rest of the instruction there or the text that will appear will be treated as comments. Okay. Now uh, here I have here my first if then control structure. If then. Okay. Now make sure if you have if there will be always a matching. And if that is the common error we make when we are doing the program, okay? Then, okay, if a f one run status, so again I'm checking the variable which is binded to my controller e f run status. So I need e f run status, okay? Now, uh, it is false now, okay? Okay, let me put it in automatic. Okay, I think. Uh, my operator. Okay, so okay, just to let me go back to my system. Okay, now the system is not running right now because the operator disabled it. Okay, so let me go back to my uh, script programming. Okay, so the first line here of instruction under begin or the next instruction here is the if then structure if if run status meaning if this run status is true then it will perform this instruction if one rt accumulated is equals to if one rt accumulated plus scan value okay so this is the way you are going to add up the uh, time or the runtime. Okay. Then I will be doing the same thing with the sequencing. Okay. So this is my approach. Then end if after that it will go to 17, then 18. Again, I have here a instruction if then structure if. Now here I am checking the sequence time if it is greater than the sequence set point as you can see my sequence set point here is 45 as per displayed in my graphics okay now if it is greater than if it is true then do this i am resetting or giving or assigning a value to the identifier or variable ef1 rt sequence point one so i'm just like resetting it to zero but this time i'm not putting it there zero then if one run request is off so it's time for ef1 to rest that's why i'm putting it to off then ef1 change over is on meaning ef1 stops because it's change over there's a change over okay so that is the reason then EF to run request, so I am turning on EF to run request so that my other script program will see this value that it will be used in that script program. Then EF to change over, off. Okay, of course, I will put it also off. Then end if, the closing end if. Then next instruction, line 27, if 
EF1 RTF accumulated. Now this time, the, per, the, the, the last one is for sequencing. Then the next instruction here, line 27, is for checking the runtime accumulation. Because we have two runtime accumulation. Once for sequen one for sequencing, the other one for runtime accumulation for maintenance purposes. Okay. I already explained it in the previous tutorial. If EF1RT runtime accumulated is greater than our set point, which is 500 here, then the alarm, okay, I have an alarm point there. I will make it on. Okay, then go to EF1RT. So my next instruction is a jump instruction. So from here, from 29, it will look for line EF1RT. Okay, EF1RT. So this is the EF1RT. If EF1RT alarm reset equals on, then let's say the operator reset the alarm for runtime alarm. Now, actually, before he will reset it, he will make sure that the maintenance that needs to be performed in that particular equipment has been uh, has been uh, processed or has been you know has been done. Okay, then they will inform the operator. Okay, we have conducted the preventive maintenance for that equipment. Then that's the only time this. Of BMS operator will reset the alarm. Okay, so that the alarm, the accumulated runtime will go back to zero or point one. Then don't forget to reset the alarm runtime reset there. Okay, because if not, it will always reset to one. There will be no accumulation if you will leave the alarm EF1 alarm reset to on. Okay. So go to begin. So after here, ana from four, line 41, I'm giving an instruction to go to the line begin. So again, my compiler will come here, then perform again these instructions below until it will reach the last instruction where again it is instructed to go to the line begin. Okay. No, so all instructions here will be checked by the compiler. If it is true, then whatever is the instruction there, then it will be performed. Okay. Now the binding variables are the variables declared at the top of the script program. Okay. So this is also a good way if you want to debug your program. Let's say your script program is not following the logic, then you have to check here. Okay, maybe you have to check or oh, if, uh, okay, let me, okay. So let's say alarm reset. Now alarm reset is false, okay. So now EFRT accumulation. Now actually in the program, you can monitor or you can check the performance of the program. Okay, right now it is disabled, okay. So let me go back to my, system i will try to enable it okay so ah uh, disabled operator enable is disabled i will enable it so that the system will work then we will go back to the script program so we can monitor the variables as you can see here the variables are uh, changing because the program all this script program if it is enabled these programs are uploaded to the pro the controller and it will it's working in the background okay so as you can see here now uh ef2 is running now you will check the graphics okay because the sequence is already reset okay then okay so this is the program for ef1 run hours okay i don't think i need to explain to you this uh Tabs, different tabs, it's already uh, explained. But one thing that I want you to, uh, as you can hear in the background, my funds are changing over because of the energizing and the energizing of the magnetic contactor. You can hear because my control panel is very, is adjacent to me. Okay. 
Now, here, the only difference here, guys, is you will see here the relinquish default. Now, for alarm reset, you need to use the relinquish default. So, let me show you. Okay. So, here, the point alarm reset, okay, this one, you will not use the value. I'm not using the value. So, I'm using the relinquish default. Okay. Later, maybe I will be showing you. Okay. Okay. Now, that's the only difference here. That's the, in the alarm reset, I'm just using the relinquish default. Now, I will show you it. Why? Okay. Now, uh, I think the script program is very uh, clear and concise. It's neat. It's, uh, as I said, I will make it more understandable. Okay. So let me go to my uh, server so I can show you the relinquish default. Okay. Now wait. Relinquish default. So let me come. Okay. Now for the relinquish default. Okay. Let me re remove this. Delete. Okay. For the relinquish default. That is EF1 alarm reset. Isn't it? Okay. So let me go to that point. So this one. Okay. Now here you go to properties. Okay, take note of this because this is the problem that you will encounter when you are doing your script programming, especially if you are using the same controller. Now, in the command, you will see here the relinquish default. I'm using this one, okay, because okay, EF1, so I'm, use, I'm using this one, okay. So, I'm not using the value. Okay, I'm using the relinquish default. Okay, now let me show you. because this is the one changing. If I'm resetting, this is the one that is becoming reset and normal. Okay, so th that's why I'm using this one. Okay, now for EF to alarm reset, let me check this one properties. So just take note of this, like this one. Okay, okay, so I'm using the relinquish default. Okay, guys, uh, I think uh, I have already explained to you our uh, runtime accumulation script program, EF1 run hours. Now, I don't need to explain to you EF2 run hours because the program is similar. The logic for EF1 run hours, I used the same logic, but of course, you have to change the identifiers or the variable. If it is EF1, then use EF2. Okay. So the last, the next part will be the EF main program. Okay. So guys, thank you. And once again, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. You can always click the notification bell and put your comment, like, and share the video. Okay. So again, thank you for watching. And before I will end, I will say, God bless us all. Let's all be safe.